let me uh, add my thanks to Ron Unzes, to all of you for being here, and my uh, condolences for those of you who are getting hotter and more, more uncomfortable in your uh, positions. Let me also say that um, I admire Ron Unz. I think Ron Unz has uh, done something that constitutes good citizenship in many ways. He has focused his attention and his remarkable energy and vigor on issues of, uh, of great importance in public education, and he has made this, uh, this debate possible. Um, I just wish that the vigor with which he uh, approached these issues was matched by an equivalent rigor in thinking about them and in informing himself about the real facts of bilingual education and of second language acquisition and bilingualism. Um, I don't have very much time. Let me just try to make a few points about the basic, the basic facts of bilingual development and bilingual education. First of all, I agree with Mr. Anz. Quality of educational programs count. Um, we, in every single kind of educational policy, it, it doesn't matter uh, what the theory is if you don't have the theory well implemented. Badly designed bilingual programs are not programs that I would defend or anybody else would defend. On the other hand, I would point out that intensive one-year immersion programs are not particularly well designed. In fact, there is no design for, for one-year immersion in California. The resources that are available to support teachers trying to implement one-year immersion are uh, if anything, far worse than the resources available to teachers implementing bilingual education. So the alternative here, us one-year immersion program, is a program for which poor quality is also almost inevitably the case. And it's not the case that there are no good bilingual programs in the country. There are many. There are too many poor bilingual programs, but there are many good bilingual programs. Think about math and science in American schools. There are a lot of classrooms in which math and science is being taught fairly badly with poor curricula and bad teacher preparation. We don't eliminate math and science from the curriculum because it isn't being done well. Um, secondly, uh, Mr. Unz has publicly uh, challenged the idea that it might take longer than a year or, as he said tonight, a year and a little bit to learn English. And, of course, I agree with them. It, you can learn some English in a year. Um, you can learn quite a bit of English in a year. How many um, vocabulary items do we think the children in these intensive immersion programs are managing to learn, the five-year-olds? Maybe 1,000, maybe 1,200, maybe 1,500? That would be a very good outcome at the end of one year of intensive immersion. But it puts children several thousand words behind monolingual English speakers who've been acquiring English since, since birth. Uh, and we know from studies of English learning children and uh, English only children that if they arrive at first grade with vocabulary smaller than 5,000 words or 6,000 words, they're very likely to have trouble learning how to read. Learning how to read is the big challenge in school. It's not speaking English, it's reading English. And children who start the process of learning how to read with limited vocabularies in English are going to have trouble. That is the situation of children who've only had one year of not very good quality intensive immersion. Third, outcomes at the end of kindergarten or even at the end of first grade are really not the outcomes we as educators should be interested in. Um, the long-term outcomes that are of interest to me at least are outcomes uh, in fourth grade reading comprehension. They're outcomes in uh, eighth grade math. The, I want to know whether children can understand stories and predict what might happen next or interpret what the characters are doing. I want to know if they can explain their own reasoning when they do a math problem. I want to know if they can uh, formulate their observations and test hypotheses in their science classes. I want to know whether they're going to get into algebra and trigonometry in high school, whether they're going to get admitted to, to colleges. Um, those are the outcomes that really count. Now, Mr. Unz claims that the SAT scores, the SAT 9 scores in California have gone up because of bilingual education. That is a very, very uh, dubious claim. But even if it were true that first and second graders' SAT 9 scores had gone up uh, because of the elimination of bilingual education, these are not outcomes which are of long-term great relevance for English language learners. Let's think about the challenges of understanding complex texts in fourth grade and ask ourselves whether one year of, of intensive exposure to English is sufficient to prepare children for those tasks. Um, finally, uh, with reference to bilingual education, it's clear that bilingual programs do teach English. That's why they're called bilingual. 
Um, the presentation that has been uh, given here is, is that children are in other language programs until they are exited from other language programs. Of course, good bilingual programs teach English, and of course, bilingual educators, like the parents of immigrant children, want children to learn English. Uh, some of them might also, the parents as well as the educators, want children to maintain a home language, um, and there is no reason why there, that needs to be in conflict with the task of learning English. So the, the notion that bilingual education programs are not focused on teaching English is, of course, um, just a simple misrepresentation of what's going on in the good programs that we would like to try to replicate. Let me move to a slightly different level with my comments. I comments not about bilingual education, which I could go on talking about a lot longer, but about making better educational policy. Um, as I said, I really admire Mr. Unz and his, his commitment to improving education, and I wish there were more people out there who were, who were citizens who were as interested, but responsible advocacy is informed advocacy, and I wish he would um, pay attention to the research in this area. I wish he would not reject um, educational research, but even if he wants to reject educational research, he could pay attention to the linguists and the psycholinguists who are studying second language acquisition. Um, I, I don't have time to, to quote chapter and verse of the research about, for example, how long it does take for children to acquire a reasonable vocabulary and control over English that will equip them to do good academic work, but there's a pile of books over there. Um, I don't have time to talk about them. I hope perhaps Mr. Unz will have time to read them. Uh, because they would inform him about the realities of second language acquisition. Um, secondly, good educational policy is unlikely to be made by referendum. Good educational policy is unlikely to be made in such a way that there is a, a fiat, a single, a single program for all children, a one-size-fits-all policy. That's not um, the way good education works. Education is very complex, and silver bullets do not solve challenging problems. Of course, I should point out that there's, if, that if, even if uh, Mr. Unz got his way and transitional bilingual education were eliminated, some negative consequences that he would acknowledge as negative consequences will come along with that. Older children, whom he agrees need bilingual education, probably won't get it. Two-way programs and maintenance bilingual programs that are actually producing bilinguals, much better than foreign language classrooms in U.S. Class, in US schools are, um, will also be eliminated in the process. And finally, um, he suggests that parents uh, boycotted bilingual programs because they didn't have any alternative. The fact of the matter is that in that every state in the union, parents have a choice about bilingual or English-only programs. They simply have to ask to get their children out of bilingual. Don't, we do not need to destroy bilingual education in order to protect the rights of individual parents, which already exist, to choose English-only programs if that's what they want.